Hi, in this video, you will hear strategies that an instructor used to motivate her students in a health science course. She used the music model of motivation, for which instructors need to ensure that students feel empowered by having the ability to make decisions about some aspect of their learning, and ensure that students understand why what they're learning is useful for their long and short-term goals. And instructors need to ensure that students believe that they can succeed if they put forth the effort and are interested in the content and instructional activities. And finally, instructors need to ensure that students believe that others in the learning environment care about their learning and about them as a person. Music is an acronym that can help instructors remember these five principles. So Abby, uh, you are teaching a course here at the university. Uh, could you tell us something about the course that you're teaching and how you then made some changes to it? Sure. Um, I teach in the physical therapy department here, and I teach a course called uh, Biophysical Modalities. Mm -hmm. It's when the students, uh, they're in their third year, and they're learning about how to use uh, machines like ultrasound and laser and uh, electrical stimulation mm -hmm. in order to bring about healing or bring about um, the reduction of pain. Um, so it's a tool that's used in physical therapy by physical therapists, mm -hmm. and this is the course where they learn about the background, uh, about why they use it, when they should use it, uh, when they should not use it. Um, so it includes all that kind of information um, that is important to using the machines. So, Okay. And you decided that you were going to make some changes to the way you were teaching this course. Mm -hmm. Yes. How so, did you do that? So basically, this course is being only taught uh, the sort of the, the book knowledge behind the use of the machines mm -hmm. uh, versus, and there's no lab time, so we don't have any time to actually physically use the machines okay. in the course. And so it's very, in and of itself, very dry material. Mm. Um, and uh, I have taught it in the past in, in a purely sort of lecture format, and I had a real desire to try to teach it in a different format and to improve the way that I taught as well. And so that's why I decided to go ahead and make some changes in it. So, Okay. And you uh, got to know the music model mm -hmm. uh, a few years back, mm -hmm. and uh, the first or, or one of the uh, components is the empowerment. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, how could you ensure in a course like this um, mm. that the student felt students felt empowered? Mm. Well, I tried the best as I could to give them as many choices and also to give them a voice within mm. the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ways I tried to give them a voice was by coming with like if a new assignment was coming out and uh, there was. Uh, some information that could be decided together, for example, when is the due date, mm -hmm. um, that I would bring it in a word format and indicate to them that they had a voice, that they could uh, say something about when it was due, um, and that we would decide together. And then I would come back with a PDF format that was now the what was in stone okay. once we decided together. So that was one way that I felt that I empowered them. Um, I also uh, actively tried to give them various ways to learn the material. They had their textbook, of course, but we also had um, PowerPoints that were available as well as audio PowerPoints so they could listen as well. Um, I also went online and found uh, learning resources for them um, on like YouTube and other ways that they could learn the material. Um, and so I tried to give them varied ways they could learn as a form of uh, empowerment as well. Mm. Um, and then I gave them, they had to do as part of the course a research article, they had to present it. Mm. Uh, I gave them choices with respect to choosing what modality they wanted to present okay. and then about what condition mm. as well. Um, and so, and then lastly, they, we did form teams, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the success. But, um, part of uh, that empowerment in that situation was they had some choices in who were their team members were going to be for the teamwork. So. Okay. And how did you feel that students responded to being empowered in this way? 
Well, I know they really felt good about being able to be included. I have a quote from one of them saying that the teacher asks the students their opinions and takes into account their wishes. So mm -hmm. I felt that was a real good statement for them, feeling that they had a voice in okay. what was going on. Very good. Mm -hmm. What about the usefulness? How did you make sure that students felt that the content of this course was useful to them? Well, I found it really helpful to first actually go out into the community and survey physical therapists about how much they were using these modalities. So I could come back to the students I was about to teach them about laser and I could say, mm -hmm. well, these, this is the number of physiotherapists that are using laser, and this is how many times a day they're actually using it on patients. And so the students could actually see a real example, oh, physical therapists are using this, they're using it often, I better learn how to use it effectively if I want to be a good physical therapist. And so I tried to link it back to their goal of wanting to be a good physical therapist. So that was one thing. And then we also developed in the class what was called a job aid. Um, mm -hmm. So the main problem with uh, I saw is that they're learning this knowledge, and yet they're not going to be actually in the clinic using this knowledge until over a year later. Mm -hmm. And so how can we make this connection between mm -hmm. they've learned what they've learned from their book knowledge mm -hmm. to their actual clinical knowledge? Mm -hmm. And so the development of a job aid, so this job aid had all the various important information like the biophysical properties, the contraindications, mm -hmm. indications, mm -hmm. how they might describe even how mm -hmm. the modality to the patient, because they have to do that in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. So that was all information that they could sort of whip out when they're actually in their mm -hmm. clinic and mm -hmm. uh, especially if their clinical teacher said well we're going to you're going to treat with ultrasound now they could bring that out have all that information mm -hmm. for themselves in Icelandic in their own language mm -hmm. and and that it would be just a great review that they could you know be prepared and ready mm -hmm. for when their uh, teacher asked them about it so and did uh, students responses uh, indicate that they felt this usefulness component well, they specifically mentioned the job aids. They yeah, really, they, they said, you know, one quote was, job aids will help us to be successful in clinicals, mm -hmm. and it contributed to our learning. Mm -hmm. So Very good. Yeah. And you mentioned success before, yeah. success, the third mm -hmm. component. Yes. How, mm -hmm. how were you able to uh, ensure that your students could be successful in this course? Mm -hmm. Well, the, I think the biggest problem with this course is the idea that it's based in physics and math. And many of these students, I believe, probably have had experiences in the past when they have not been successful mm -hmm. in these courses mm -hmm. and may even be walking in with this attitude of, I cannot be successful in this course. And so I wanted to uh, help them be more successful by pairing them with other students that maybe were more successful in these areas. And so I gave the students a uh, quiz at the beginning. It was ungraded. All they had to do was show up. But it showed me how comfortable they were with physical principles and with math. And then I used that information to put these students into teams mm -hmm. so that each team had sort of a specialist in math and science who felt more comfortable with yes. those principles. And I also used that survey to identify students that had um, experience using the modalities because I thought, well, um, if you if you have never used them before, mm -hmm. uh, having someone in there in the room with you that can describe it to you mm -hmm. and describe what it felt like when it was on mm -hmm. would be helpful to those students mm -hmm. when they were learning about the modality. And so that was one way that I, I tried to promote the idea of success. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that we did regular quizzes. So this was a flipped course mm -hmm. where they were responsible to come into the um, classroom already having prepared and read the chapter and we started right away with a quiz mm -hmm. and that quiz uh, that was taken as both an individual and as a team again very low grading not not a stressful informal type of uh, t testing mm -hmm. but it uh, allowed them to see uh, allowed them to learn from one another mm -hmm. allowed them also to see what they had learned from their own book reading and so I felt that that helped them to see especially that they were also making progress because that was each time they took 
this quiz. They could see they had learned something and mm -hmm. then they moved on. Mm -hmm. And so it, I think that really helped them to see that they were, it gave them feedback mm -hmm. that they were actually learning something. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing. And then I used a lot of rubrics, you yes. know, especially with any kind of, uh, like the research article, I gave them a rubric so they could mm -hmm. see what was expected. And what were some of the students' responses mm -hmm. regarding the success component? Mm -hmm. Well, they were very, especially the quizzes. Yeah. Uh, the quote said, um, quizzes are a very effective teaching method. You read the chapters because you want to be prepared for yourself mm -hmm. and for your team. And then you can also see for yourself what you learn from the chapter. So that's exactly what I, I wanted it to do yes, for them. Yes, yes, yes. So. Hmm. And interest, uh, how did you ensure that your students were interested or how could you trigger their interest? Well, I felt that all these various things that we did do, like the job aids and the quizzes, all in and of themselves generated interest. Um, also having varied ways to learn the material, I think, uh, obviously can uh, help with uh, generating interest. Um, and then we also brought in demonstrations from people outside. Uh, mm. There was a company that worked with us that actually mm. sells these uh, various types of machines. Okay. And a woman from them came in and would demonstrate like the use of a laser and the students were able to use it on themselves mm -hmm. as well. And so I think that um, that certainly generated a lot of interest. Mm. We heard mm. from back from the students about that. So. Okay. Caring. Mm -hmm. Is caring important at universities? It absolutely is. Um, I, I feel it's probably one of the most important, actually. I think it's so important that you communicate to the students that you care about them and that you respect them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's primarily by just being there, being available, accessible, mm -hmm. by uh, email, by, uh, you know, being around uh, before and after class to answer questions. Um, and just even verbally to let them know and say to them, your success as a physical th therapist, your success in learning about these modalities is important to me. Mm -hmm. And the idea that we're in this together to, um, to bring them to their goal of mm -hmm. wanting to be a good physical therapist, absolutely essential. Yeah. So these five factors, uh, empowerment, usefulness, success, interest, and caring, mm -hmm. um, are expected to motivate your students. Did you feel that they worked to motivate them to Absolutely. Study? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I, um, yeah, it just, I felt it worked really well mm -hmm. in engaging them. Yes. So. Did you find the model easy to use? Mm -hmm. um, or, uh, or was it a challenge? Uh, how, how, what was your experience uh, mm. adjusting your course in this way? I actually found it really easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what I love most about this. Uh, I know the music model has a tremendous amount of scientific background mm -hmm. and validation behind it, mm -hmm. uh, which I uh, absolutely love as well. But mm -hmm. what I really love about it is how practical it is. Um, uh, I think Dr. Brett Jones has really done a great job of taking things that are very theoretical and hard maybe to understand mm -hmm. and apply and basically has come up with this uh, book that is just full of strategies in each one of these five principles that, that you can apply tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You can go into your classroom and do. Mm -hmm. And so that has just been really helpful to me and very, uh, very easy to apply. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you would recommend it to others? Absolutely. And I have already applied it into mm -hmm. other courses that okay. I've taught. Mm -hmm. And I, it is so easy. And uh, I believe it help, would help any course. And again, it's, it really is quite as simple as just asking yourself, what can I do to bring these components, these principles into my classroom? So. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.